When you think of the strongest character in Genshin, who is the first character you think of? Maybe you think of a damage dealer like Hu Tao or Ayaka. Or maybe the first thing that comes to mind is a support character like Bennett. There are over 50 characters on the Genshin Impact roster now, and each of them feel as though they have some role to play in some niche. There's plenty of flexible characters like Fischl, Singcho, Bennett, Sucrose, and tons of other units overall. And there's also many niche units like Sara, Goro, Candice, Toma, and many more. These units all have something in common too, maybe you've noticed. The first group, the flexible one, all has multiple things going on in their kit. They all provide some source of damage, yes, even Bennett. And they all provide a party utility that has made them valuable in tons of different teams. Whereas the more niche characters also have a few things in common. Sure, their damage is all lower than the first batch of supports we saw for Genshin, but they also are meant to be played with very specific elements elements or teams. The biggest thing that they have in common though, they are all newer units to Genshin Impact, being released long after a meta was established. When Sumeru dropped, Hoyoverse took their first stab at switching up the meta, with an entirely new element introduced and tons of new reactions that you could argue are a little bit more complicated than the previous ones, there is a lot of room for new creativity, and this is all while attempting to keep the game fairly balanced. But unfortunately, on their quest for balancing the game, they ended up not finding ways to innovate outside of creating extremely niche characters. That said, niche isn't always bad. A lot of the time, it just enforces or strengthens a new playstyle, which can always be really fun. But there also is such a thing as too niche, and now that we have Nilo, it's about time that we talk about that. The meta in Genshin is pretty consistent. The first batch of characters had some 4 stars that absolutely stood out just due to the insane utility and damage they provided. Xiang Ling is the premier free-to-play pyro DPS, she applies an insane amount of off-field pyro and damage, and Sing Chao gives damage reduction, healing, and enables pyro through fast hydro application. Along with Bennett, they form the core for national team, which is known to be one of the most consistently good teams for free-to-play players. Now if you groaned, when I mention national, you might be part of a growing portion of the player base that's pretty tired of running the same meta teams over and over. Almost every Hydro in the game can fit into a Xiongling team because Xiongling and Bennett and Sucrose are such an insanely broken combination that just the tiniest bit of Hydro, whether that character is vaporizing their own hits or allowing Xiongling to vape, can be enough to push that team over the edge. And to be honest, you might not even need that Hydro. So why is it that the same teams never get replaced? The meta will likely always revolve around some sort of elemental reactions, that's a given. Unfortunately, though I see tons of comments on every single video I include National in telling me to find something new or original, there is no way to replicate a vape team effectively without National. Toma does not deal enough damage or apply enough pyro to vaporize with. Yoimiya's burst has been specifically made to not allow your hydros to vape and to only allow Yoimiya herself to vaporize. If you choose to use Barbara instead of Singcho, your intention making your characters and team worse. If you want to see new vaporized teams, if you want to see Nilu Vape not use Xiangling and Bennett to carry her, Hoyoverse would need to introduce characters that are good enough to allow that but they won't. In an attempt to not power creep the game, Hoyoverse is making new units more niche. They don't want anything to be stronger than National. If they release another character that deals high damage like Shang Ling or can enable forward vape on her level, there's potential for the game to power creep, leading to them having to make more difficult content to keep up, resulting in both an unhappy dev team and an unhappy player base. It's not that meta players aren't creative or that they just haven't figured out the next best thing, it's just that the necessary tools to improve upon the meta or to change things up do not currently exist. Now niche doesn't always have to mean bad. Usually when a niche is forced, that's Hoyoverse's way of trying to get the community to play a different way from the established meta. And sometimes, if you have everything you need for that niche, it can be good enough to compete with meta teams. That's true in Nilu's case as well. Nilu, while being extremely limited, does perform well within her designated space. That said, in both my opinion and the opinion of many other random users on on the internet, Nilu's design is problematic. As I stated before, niche does not equate to bad. Usually, it just means that the character is limited in uses. At the end of the day, even niche characters can be played wherever, and in my opinion, that's what makes Genshin an incredibly fun game. Using Sara instead of Bennett in a non-electro quickswap team, playing Pyro or Hydro Kutsing just because you can, are both examples of things that aren't necessarily optimal by any means, but are still possible because even though Sara and Candace 
this are niche, they aren't so limited that the game doesn't allow you to play them with anyone else. Their standard kit effects work with anybody and you can slot them into a team at any time. Nilu, however, suffers from restrictive kit design. Her niche is so limited that they wrote out an entire line of text to tell you that she cannot be played in other ways, and if you try, half of her kit will just deactivate. With Goro, you gain buffs based on how many Geo characters are in the team. But if you run Bennett or a non-Geo DPS in your team, you still get those buffs. The teams might be a little weird and maybe a little impractical, but at the end of the day, the character is still completely functional. If you try to run a non-Hydro or Dendro character with Nilu, you are quite literally losing out on half of Nilu's kit. While she is incredibly strong in her niche of blooms, this restriction combined with a limited Dendro roster and a small 4-star Hydro roster makes her an extremely expensive character to get a lot of value out of. Sure, you could use Barbara, but it would be much easier and more lucrative to use Kokomi. Nilu's niche forces her into a position where you have to hyper-invest into her teams to make her close to as good as some other meta teams. And if you even try to be creative and find workarounds or new playstyles for her, she just turns off. Imagine how much more fun Nilu could have been with an Animo or Cryo unit. Enemies are gonna move apart in Abyss after a future banner because they just moved them closer to sell Nilu and Bloom teams, so having grouping could be amazing. It could make her future-proof. Having a Cryo could allow you to have different Dendro and Hydro character options for your teams as well, just due to how elemental gauges work. All in all, if Nilu didn't have that passive that completely disabled her if you tried to be creative, she would be a significantly more fun unit to build around and experiment with. There have been many changes to the philosophy and design of Genshin throughout its time, but a big one has been character kit design. While it is absolutely important and fun to design completely unique kits every time, the more characters that exist, the more niche characters and kits will have to get in order to be unique. Quite frankly, I'm kind of terrified for the future of Sumeru characters like Dia, and forgive me for my pronunciation, I'll hate them. At one point during early development for Genshin Impact, Hoyoverse, or MiHoYo at the time, mentioned that their characters are the content that they want to produce. Obviously, they care about the story, the world, the combat, and everything else, but they wanted to put the focus on the characters, because ultimately, that is the content that's changing in the game. While there's absolutely merit to that in a gacha game, when a character only works well enough with one single team comp, that character can end up becoming less valuable even if they are a decent unit in their niche. If, in the future, Hoyoverse decides to make a dedicated burning character, for example, forcing them to only use Pyro and Dendro would make that character extremely limited in versatility and prevent players from wanting to try out other characters for burning teams. And because the reaction is already weak, it would require that character to make burning good. Said character would also likely see little play because those who want to play other units with that character would just be unable to. For example, if I happen to not enjoy playing Dendro MC and Kokomi, but I want to play Nilu, I'm forced to play other suboptimal Bloom characters rather than play Nilu with Pyro, Electro, Cryo, or Animo units that I do enjoy. Seeing this level of restriction could also be discouraging to players who collect many units because they can only use a strict few. Whereas with current meta units, you're able to slot any fourth unit into a team of three core members and it will be usable. You do not experience this issue with other niche supports like Goro and Sara because even though they may be suboptimal outside of their niche, their kit will still function at the end of the day, which gives the characters a layer of flexibility that Nilu doesn't have. Don't get me wrong, every single game that frequently adds new characters will need to diversify and end up creating kits designed around specific gimmicks. With a longer lifespan, gacha-based games need to either power creep old units with better versions of them, or create problems for new niches to solve. There's no real issue with going the niche route, but it's not much of a stretch to say that a lot lot of players would at least like the bare minimum option to play a unit wherever they please without half of the kit turning off. If the player base would like to move away from the current meta units, more niche units is certainly one direction to go instead of power creep. But there is such a thing as too niche, and if they continue along this path of what they did with Nilu, it's going to be really hard to recommend future characters, which ultimately could be Hoyoverse's goal. Maybe they're looking to flush out everyone who TCs so that way even bad characters can sell really well and it 
makes their job easier. But I don't know, that's a bit of a tinfoil hat theory. Either way, the most we can do as players is hope that going forward, we see complete characters where even if they are niche, they don't become unplayable and are free to test out and push the limits of Genshin's amazing combat system. Units that are too niche limit creativity and ultimately take away from the fun that is to be had with all of the new characters that release. So here's to hoping Hoyverse understands that and is making some good decisions about units in the future. This video just started out as a bunch of bullet points on Nilu, but I kind of feel like a lot of these things had to be said. So would you prefer a bit of power creep to phase out old units? Or do you prefer the idea of creating more units to fill a specific niche, even if they're worse than old units? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, thanks for listening to my ramblings. I go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash So if you want to come hang out, make sure to come check things out. And until then, you guys, I'll catch you later. Hope you guys are enjoying Nilu, and I'm really looking forward to talking about the Dendro Archon with you guys. I'll catch you next time.